Hello, my name is Stephanie Atzapardi. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm an MD, PhD student, meaning that I'm in a training program that trains us to become medical doctors as well as research scientists. So medical scientist, what does that mean? Are you a doctor or are you a lab scientist? Well, it's a little bit of both, and that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. So when you think about doing research, there is all types of research. You can do research into stars and exoplanets. You can do research into chemical biology, maybe drug discovery, or maybe you want to understand the basics of disease. Well, when you think about it, some of these major areas of research, like cancer research, neuroscience, are directly related to disease. By no means do we know everything about medicine. Some diseases, we don't really understand their mechanisms. For example, an autoimmune disease. We don't know what causes autoimmune diseases, like type 1 diabetes. Um, so these questions are questions that medical scientists would really like to answer. And when you have the training of an MD, PhD, you can go back and forth between these two worlds. You can take care of patients and then find questions that fascinate you and try to answer them in the lab. But besides those kind of two realms of research and patient care, you also wear many other hats. For example, as a medical scientist, you're a professor and you can teach at the medical school or graduate schools. You might become a member of the leadership of a department or an advocate for changing healthcare or making an impact on an issue that really, um, really makes you passionate. Well, most of you are probably in the grade school area, um, be it elementary, middle, or high school. So as you know, that's a big chunk of time by itself. From K through 12, that's 13 years. After high school, there's college, of course. Your bachelor's, you can maybe do in, in four years. Some people do a little faster, some people takes longer. And you might major in a science if you're interested in going into becoming a medical scientist. So what I did is I chose to major in biology. During my college course, I also started to work in the laboratory. So after college, some people will take time off gap years in order to do full-time research and make sure that science is something that they're really passionate about and that they'd like to spend their whole life doing. That's what I did. I took two years to work as a laboratory assistant full-time. At first I was doing cancer research and then I started to do infectious disease research. So the point being, you know, don't limit yourself just because you start in one area doesn't mean that you can't enjoy and explore other areas. The next step that most medical scientists will take is to enroll in medical school. The process of getting into medical school is quite tough. You have to take a standardized exam called the MCAT and you go around and interview at many medical schools and hopefully find the one that is a good fit for you. Some students will opt to do a PhD as well. The PhD part is typically um, taking between three to five years to complete and can be done in biomedical sciences, but some do offer PhDs outside of biomedicine. I'm in my second year and so far it's been super fun. And residency is where you have the chance to solidify your clinical training. The residency programs vary in their length, depending on what field you choose to specialize in. So I've told you about this very long journey of education. And I just want to kind of share with you that it's a roller coaster, you know, Sometimes you're going to have highs and sometimes you're going to have lows. Here's, you know, a point where you might 
be on a roll. You're making good progress. Maybe you wrote a paper and it just got accepted. But there's going to be times when, well, we've all been there. You fail a test and you can't let that get you down because you have to keep your eye on the prize. What might that prize be? Well, sometimes we think of it as being graduation. These are the times when we can like reflect and really be proud of what we've done. Now, along the way, and even after graduation, there's going to be times when you're like, hmm, did I really go down this path? Was it right for me? And do I fit in? Well, that is something called imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is the feeling that, well, I'm not actually a doctor, am I? It's a feeling that a lot of people, and especially a lot of women face, when you're kind of in a field where you're the only woman or you're the only one of your skin color and it just feels like you don't really fit in. When you think about the timeline that I showed you before of how many years it takes to become a medical scientist, you might be a little bit overwhelmed. Those are kind of the years of your life where you're a young person and you have all these ideas of other dreams that you wanted to pursue. Maybe you wanted to travel around the world. Maybe you wanted to start a family. Or maybe you wanted to run a marathon, become an Olympic athlete. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can become a medical scientist and you can pursue your dreams as well. Definitely don't feel scared that you're going to be overworked. There's always time for caring for yourself and for vacations. I'd like to just share a piece of advice that might help you. And that advice is to look for role models and mentors. And I'm gonna share with you some role models that I thought are just super inspiring. When you become a medical scientist, you can also become an astronaut. And Dr. Mae Jemison is the first African-American woman who went into space. She's an engineer, a physician, and a former NASA astronaut. I think this might be what my dream career was as a child, to become an astronaut. So to see that you can become a medical scientist and an astronaut is something that actually kind of excites me. Mae Jemison said, don't let anyone rob you of your imagination, your creativity, or your curiosity. It's your place in the world. It's your life. Go on and do all you can with it and make it the life you want to live. Maybe some of you as a childhood dream wanted to be a detective after watching a bunch of crime shows. Well, guess what? As a medical scientist, you can solve mysteries. Dr. Barbara Sampson, is trained as a forensic pathologist, meaning that she can do autopsies on deceased patients to determine the cause of death. She is the first woman chief medical examiner in New York City, a true leader. As a medical scientist, you can also be an advocate. Think of an issue, maybe it's in healthcare, and maybe you wanna do something to change to improve the lives of patients. And Dr. Ushe Blackstock is a prime example of a doctor who's doing this. She's trained as an emergency medicine physician and she's the founder of Advancing Health Equity in order to make her impact on alleviating racial health disparities. To sum it up, I think that if you become a medical scientist, you can really change the world. Maybe you'll even discover a cure. Maybe you'll win a Nobel in the future. Who knows? The potential is all yours and you can. I think the take home message from this presentation is you can do this. And with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to this talk by a medical scientist.